Hi everyone. This is a basic beginning uh, instructional video for how to play one of these keyboard auto harps. And uh, I'm going to be trying to describe it in such a way that it might make sense to uh, auto harp players and to keyboard players. But, uh, and I'll be going through a number of things. I'll start with just some general points and then uh, show you some uh, sort of skills and drills to begin learning the uh, chording and strumming and picking kinds of uh, uh, approaches to make this kind of harp uh, work well. Um, first thing you need to realize is that this kind of harp operates the exact opposite <laughs> of how a traditional auto harp chord bar set works. Uh, on a regular auto harp with a normal traditional chord bar set, uh, when you don't push down any of the bars, uh, all of the strings would sound. So if I were to strum across it on a regular auto harp, you get a cacophony <laughs> of all of those strings sounding. On this one, if I don't touch or push down on any bar, all of the strings are muted from the spring pressure of small pads coming up underneath the strings. So, let me show you. Uh, I'm not pressing down any bar. I go across it. All the strings are dead. Uh, on a regular auto harp bar, uh, traditional kind of chord bar, when you press down, it mutes all the strings that you do not want to sound. So if you want to play a C chord, um, when you press down that bar, it lets the C, E, and G notes be unmuted and sound, but it mutes everything else around them. On this one, what you have to do to play a C chord uh, is you have to press down the notes that you want to release and sound. So I would press down the C note, the E note, and the G note. And yes, I have to use three fingers to do that. And so I press those down. <laughs> sound all the strings. I can press down one of them, press down, that's the C, or I can put, add the E, add the G, or I can just press down the C and the G, and get some of those modal kind of effects. But anyway, uh, I'm going to press down the C, E, and G, and that gives me the C chord. Then if I want to play a C7, Actually, that, that's what traditionally called a C7, is actually the flatted seventh. I would uh, add to that C, E, and G the B flat note up there. If I want to play a C6, which is also the same thing as an A minor seven, I would have C, E, and G, and I would add the A note. And if I wanted to play the C major 7th, which is the actual B note added, that's E, C, E, G, and B. And I can continue to hold down the C, E, and G, and just using my thumb in this case, go rapidly between those. I hold down the C, E, and G while I'm doing that, they continue to sound in the background, uh, but I am just varying that single note. Similarly, if I want to play a C minor note, or C minor chord, uh, all I do is I have the C, E, and G down, and then I lower that E to the E flat. And if I want to play a C add nine, I would go down to the D note. I'll say more about why that's the two note in this system, but it's really the nine note if it were above. But uh, C, E, 
uh, and G for the C chord. Now hit the E flat for the minor. Now I'm going to add the nine. So I've got C, E, G, and uh, D. And C add nine. And if I want to play it, uh, this the full nine chord, which adds the flat to seven, add that. And similarly, I'll go back to the C chord. And if I want to uh, add a uh, augmented, um, that means the G goes up a half step, so the G would go to the um, G sharp, like that. And uh, if I wanted to do a C diminished, uh, what a diminished means is that the three and five note both come down a half step. So I've got C, E, and G. I bring down the, uh, the E to the E flat and the G to the G flat. And of course, the C diminished seventh starts with your full C7, C, E, G, and B flat. And all of the notes, except the root note C, come down a half step. So what I'm doing in that case, I'm continuing to hold down the C note, and but I fairly quickly move the other three down a half step, or you can even just do them one at a time. But that gives you some idea, and I don't want to get too, too confused about that. But let me show you what happens in a very fast strumming pattern and picking pattern when I'm just using the C, F, and G root chords and adding all those other combinations. some of the chordal and uh, melodic combinations you can get with this kind of set. Okay, now let's uh, sort of forget about that for a minute and say, well, how do you get to the point where you can play one of these things sort of smoothly? Well, what I advise doing is to start with your C chord, which is again the C, E, and G. And you note I'm using my, these three fingers to press that down. As you practice more, you may discover that a different fingering pattern is better for you, but for now, let's stick with that. So that's the C, E, and G. If I want to go to a C sharp chord, I just move each of those three up one note. And that gives me my C sharp or D flat chord. And then uh, I move each of those up I uh, one step, one note, uh, to get to the D chord. Similarly, to get to E flat, and to E, F, D, whoops, sorry, uh, F, then B, F sharp, then the G, a flat, A, B flat, and B. Now, the first exercise I recommend is to do that in order and get faster and faster. Once you 
sort of get the feel for that. Well, before I go there, let me point out one thing. You might hear people talk about doing chord inversions, and I want to show you how that works and what that means. Um, like if you play a C chord, you start on the C, E, and G of that one octave. Um, if you were, uh, and then if you go up to the C sharp chord, you're still going straight up that single octave. Uh, but when you go to the D chord, well, now you're actually doing the same thing, taking each note up one step, and same with the E flat chord and the E chord. But when you get to F, you have to do your first inversion. What that means is, if I had a two octaves to go to, I would start the chord on the F, go up to the A, and then hit the C up at the beginning of the second octave. But when you're working with a single octave, what you have to do is you do the F and the A, and you come down to the C, which makes really, instead of the note order FAC, from the octave point of view, the note, note order is CFA. But if you strum in the appropriate place or pick in the appropriate place, that inversion doesn't make any difference. It's the trick in learning the inversions to, you know, learning that when you're doing that pattern, how you have to drop down that C. So you're going from the E and to grab all those notes, then to go to the F, you have to do the inversion. Okay, and then if you go from the F to the F sharp, that's pretty straightforward from that point. And then you go to the G, and that's pretty straightforward. Uh, and then you go to the A flat though, and you're doing another inversion. Same with the A. And the B flat and the B. So that, and also like if you're adding a 9 uh, or 11 or a 13, what that means is, and I'm showing you in the C chord because that's simplest to understand, like a C chord is C, E, G. And if you do a C add 9, the 9 would normally be the C up here at the beginning of the second octave. But to do a, a C add nine here, you keep your finger on the C, E, and G, and you add the two note, which is the equivalent, if you add a seven to it, to the nine note up above. So I'm gonna, and I'm gonna use the same finger to sort of come over and, and push down both of them. So here's a C, here's a C nine. So, uh, that's probably about as much as you can handle <laughs> about that right now. But let me go back to uh, this basic drill of just going up the chords. sort of get the feel for that, what I suggest doing is learning to practice the 1, 4, and 5 chord uh, of each key. And again, we'll start in C. So I'm going to press, you know, play that C chord, the C, E, and G note. Then I'm going to go to the F chord, which is your 4 chord. And to do that, I'm going to continue to hold down the C down here, which is in both chords, and just move these two fingers to the F and the A. So I go. And 
And then to go to the G, I have to move all three fingers because the G notes are D, G, and B, but I would go from the F to the G. And once you've you know, been practicing the individual chords, hopefully as you do it slowly, that won't be too big of a problem. So here's B, F, G. And then I would recommend sticking with that one for a little while and uh, varying the speed and using different strum patterns. sort of mastered that key, the C key, uh, just with the basic root chords, then you can start doing some things like I showed you at the beginning of playing around <laughs> with varying the, uh, the uh, six notes, flatted seventh, uh, major seventh, the augmented note, the minor note, and all like that, like here, and, but doing it in all four of those uh, basic uh, uh, chords, the C, F, and G. So here we go. Now I just went to F. Here's the... I'm going from C7 to F7. I'm going to also play around with the minor in each of those chords, the uh, C minor, the F minor, and the G minor, as well as going back and forth some. Exercise, rather than adding all of those uh, uh, accidental notes, uh, different chording patterns within the chord, is to just stay, um, uh, sort of stick with your basic uh, uh, root chords of C, F, and G, and some uh, some uh, chording patterns or strumming patterns, and, and then keep going up the scale one note at a time. Like. That was C and C sharp keys. Now I'm going to go to the D key. Now the E flat key. Also, 
also do uh, that, but instead of doing full strums, you can sort of do arpeggio kind of picking. <laughs> that you know all the way up all 12 keys um, but I think I'll stop for there <laughs> um, that's sort of some of the basic introduction to some of the kinds of um, drills and skills that you can uh, sort of practice with to learn to play smoothly on this type of auto art um, I might just add one other point before I close. A lot of people say you can't open chord, uh, you know, do that really fast picking on this kind of harp. Well, in a sense that's true in that you can't do it by open chording. Uh, but again, but this auto harp works the reverse of other kind of harps. So instead of open chording, you add a note that you can then pick. So for example, if I'm in the C chord, and I want to add the, uh, uh, you know, the notes of C, E, and G, and I want to open up and, and add the um, uh, A flat note or G sharp note. Normally on a regular auto harp, what I'd have to do is, uh, uh, you know, just uh, let go of all those, let go of the C chord and try to hit the, um, the uh, A sharp note. I mean, uh, the G-sharp note in the midst of all those other notes that are ringing or able to ring. Well, this one, if anything, makes it a little easier because you continue to hold down the C, E, and G, and you just add the one note that you want to add by pressing down on it rather than releasing. So... <laughs> enough <laughs> to bother you with and um, you know this is a little bit like uh, if they build it if you build it they will come or the field of dreams or all that there really aren't that many folks trying to play this kind of uh, keyboard harp out there and I'm really not trying to promote it so much or to sell it uh, I've just had a number of uh, uh, expressions of interest and in, you know how does that thing work uh, would I be interested in having one uh, how possible is it to learn to play one of these things? What are some of the problems and differences in playing this one in a, in a regular auto harp? Uh, so that's the main reason I'm providing that. And if there is further interest, I'd be more than happy to work with individuals or just to po post some public videos and, on applying this to playing a particular tune, um, like the last two that I posted on my YouTube site recently. But I uh, think we'll stop for there, and uh, I hope you find this at least somewhat interesting. And feel free to make comments uh, to the post or ask me questions. Uh, take care. Bye.